Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for coming. Um, Simon's going to say a few words and he's happy to take some questions. This will be the only opportunity, the only opportunity he's out for this for, for one of us. Uh, thanks for uh, everyone coming this morning. Um, I just wanted to apologise for not having had a shave this morning. Um, my friends tell me that it makes me look five years younger, but um, I uh, don't want to hide from the fact that I'm, I'm 35, so I um, apologise for that. Um, I'd just like to start by thanking uh, all my family and friends, uh, all my New South Wales teammates, my Australian teammates, um, and to the cricket-loving public um, for the overwhelming amount of support that I've received uh, over the last couple of days. Um, it's been an incredibly humbling experience uh, and something that I and my family are very, very grateful for. Um, I guess after learning of my axing on Tuesday, uh, I've spent the last few days uh, discussing things with my family and my manager Robert Josky, um, just weighing up all the options that were in front of us. Uh, after much consideration, um, I've decided that I want to keep playing on for New South Wales um, due to the level of respect that I have for Cricket New South Wales um, and also my teammates over the last nine years. Um, I think that uh, you know, the amount of respect I have for them, particularly my teammates uh, and also the administrators here, um, is something that I'll, I really want to repay that faith that they've shown in me um, and hopefully we can have a very good season coming up. I've spent the last six months getting my Achilles back to 100% fitness uh, and I know that the amount of time that I've spent with our physio Murray Ryan and our fitness trainer Paul Chapman um, is something that I, I certainly wasn't going to waste their time if I wasn't um, completely dedicated in, in making myself available and being fully fit for the Tour of Sri Lanka in August. Um, I'd also like to say that I'm extremely disappointed uh, and frustrated with the decision that I found out about uh, on Tuesday. Um, but I also want to make it clear that I know that I'm not the only player that's gone through this. Uh, in the last couple of years due to inconsistent selection policies. I just hope that something good comes out of uh, this situation um, because I actually think that um, the decision that came on Tuesday was absolutely ridiculous. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions that, that uh, come my way. Um, do you aim to prove the selectors wrong then by continuing to play and win your place back by uh, just scoring a lot of runs as you did last time when you came back in 2008? Yeah, look... Uh, when it happened four years ago, um, basically my whole mindset was just to go out and enjoy my cricket wherever I was playing. I didn't think I was going to play for Australia again, uh, and I'm going to have exactly that same mindset. I owe it to my teammates, um, because when you walk out in the park, you're not only representing yourself, but your team, and there's no way in the world that uh, I'm just playing on to make up the numbers. I've never played my cricket like that, um, and I, I continue to uh, go out there and enjoy my cricket, because, you know, you are a long time retired. Um, I have been enjoying my cricket in my last few years. I haven't set any sort of timelines on things. I've just, I just take it test by test, game by game, wherever I'm playing. So I'm going to continue to have that, that outlook on my cricket. So is mean, the system taught where you can effectively be sat without notice? Is that what it boils down to, doesn't it? Yeah, look, uh, it certainly didn't come as a, as a total shock on Tuesday, um, only because I know how they operate. I've been through this situation before. Um, and I guess from my point of view, you know, to hear the news was very disappointing, uh, particularly because of the reason that was given. Um, to be given the reason that it's because the opening partnership needs to bed down for 2013, um, when I know for a fact that Watto and I have thoroughly enjoyed opening together and it's been one of the bright spots of our team in the last two years, um, I, I find it very hard to believe that. And as a result, um, yes, I agree that, you know, the system at the moment, it's not only just affecting me, and this has obviously been highlighted in this situation, but it's also affected a number of players. I'm just one of a number of players in Australian cricket over the last number of years um, that has, has have to, had to go through this process. Yeah, but what I'm saying is if this was in a corporate situation, you've been hunted because you're, you're too old. Yeah, look, uh, obviously it's been steered, steered clear from that with the press releases and stuff like that. Um, you know, obviously it opens up a can of worms if age comes into it. Um, look, there's no doubt that that is something that uh, my manager, Robert, and I, we've weighed up every single option that was, was in front of us. Um, I'll be honest, we looked at that, that uh, outcome, but as a result of looking at that outcome uh, and the way I operate, I don't think it's my style to go down that path, but we just wanted to be informed with every single decision that was, was going to be in front of us. So the, the cricket public has seemed to be very confused about selection and 
being pretty angry about the way that they've operated for a while. Is it something you've seen like before now? Have you, have you thought it's been inconsistent for a while? I think that's probably why this review's been going on uh, over the last number of months because, you know, as I say, this is not just about me. This is about a number of players that have probably um, felt aggrieved at how they've been treated by the selectors in particular and also not just the selectors, by Cricket Australia because, you know, there's people above the selectors that make the decisions on their future and also our players' futures because they, they ratify the decisions that are, that are made. So. Um, I'm one of a number of players that, that will be in this situation. And having spoken to Paul Marsh, the ACA boss, um, you know, there's actually no course of appeal against this happening. So as a player, we've got absolutely no, no way apart from you know, legal proceedings to, to answer back. You said you had to uh, you appeared before the re review panel? I have, yes. Two bombs worth it. Yeah, I, I gave my... Uh, two Is there anything you'd like to tell us that you told them? Uh, unfortunately, we're not allowed to comment on that. It's, it's been, um, you know, it's supposed to be dealt with in a private manner, um, which I respect. So I can't, can't sort of divulge anything about the review process, except that, you know, I gave my opinion not just on my own situation, but also on the state of Australian cricket uh, and where it's headed and, and the structure of it. So, I mean, uh, what do you personally think in terms of the selection panel? What in particular needs to, needs to change there? Uh, my personal opinion is that you know it needs to be more there needs to be more consistency. I mean, the facts are. I mean, a week or two before the Ashes, uh, a squad of 17 was named. Now, in my opinion, if if you can't know um, what your best 11 is a week or so before our biggest Test series that we play in the Ashes, um, then that to me reeks of indecision. Um, the fact that well, we've had 10 or 11 different spinners in the last two years or three years, whatever it's been, um, obviously some have been through retirements and. and Injury and stuff like that, but you know that, that to me is another indicator of, of the inconsistency in selections. There's been rules for some and rules for others. You and Wado have been basically the most formed batsman for so. What is the reason do you think when you go to bed that you were cut? Um, I've got a massive feeling that my age played a big big part in it. There's been so much speculation about the age of our team. Um, look, obviously that's never going to be going to be mentioned because of the legalities of it all. Um, but I know that in my last three seasons I've got the numbers on the board, I've enjoyed playing in the team um, and, and to be told that it was because the opening partnership needed to be bettered down before the 2013 Ashes um, just doesn't sit well with me. Simon, do you think your injury in the last uh, few tests played a part as well? Yeah, without a doubt. Um, I think there's no doubt that you know, as a batsman you perceived it how you're looking and playing out the crease. Obviously the perception of me over the years, you know, I'm not the prettiest bloke to watch but at the same time, I know the way I, I sort of moved and, and felt in those last couple of tests that I played probably didn't help my cause because obviously everyone's looking at that and, and making judgments based on, on the way I looked at the crease. Um, you know, I'm not using that as an excuse. I was out there ready to play, um, but I think there's no doubt that probably played a part in the perception of, of where I was at as a, as a player. So, I mean, a player to pigeon old, perhaps a specialist in one form of the game or other, a little bit more vulnerable than guys that perhaps them looked at the two or three forms of the game? Oh, yes and no. I think, uh, you know, obviously, you know, if you've got rankings in, in one-day cricket and, and uh, test cricket and having both, you, you a better chance to get a contract. But I think um, when you've been ranked highly in, in test cricket, uh, which I fortunately had been the p previous two years, um, that in itself allows you to be contracted and, and actually have a, a high, high overall ranking. So I don't think that that has contributed to this at all. Did that, uh, the selectors in position before the Ashes dropping the 17th, did that have a destabilizing influence on the team? Um, oh, I've got no doubt it did. Um, and I'm sure that there'd be other players um, you know, that would say the same thing because there's so many guys looking over their shoulder about whether they're going to play or not. And I think if you were to compare it to how England prepared, um, you know, they were settled, they played the same team in all their warm-up games and, and no surprise that they had a, a very good campaign. How much has the uh, selectors' credibility, though, been knocked on the head by this talk of 2013? In the next few months, we're playing Sri Lanka, South Africa, and the world number one, India. Yeah, look, uh, there's no doubt that's that's been the case. Um, as far back as when I started my career, playing for Australia has, all been, has always been about bottom line performance. Um, <coughs> so when I first got picked for my first tour in 1999, um, you know, you get picked because of your performance. Now it just seems that that's changed. Uh, and it's, it's not only about performance, it's about potential. Um, and, and from far back as I can remember, you know, the team's always been picked on the current, trying to win the next test match that we've been um, there to play with. Obviously an eye to the future, um, 
but you know that's that's always seemed to be the strength of Australian cricket. You pick the best 11 guys that are available at this point in time. Is that where the contract system is flawed? That it awards potential more than performance? Uh, I don't think the, the contract system is flawed in that way because, as I said, I think you can still get rewarded by being only a, a test player only, um, and you still you still get rewarded on your performance. Um, well, you'd hope to think you do, um, but. You know, potential does come into it as well, what, what you can do down the track, but I think you know, current performance also counts for when we get contracts. Are you looking at your career now on a year-by-year year basis, and did you ever contemplate retirement at all at any stage over the last couple of days? Oh, look, I'd be lying if I said I didn't. Um, you know, there's no doubt. You, you, everything, every thought goes through your mind. Um, and, and as I said, this is not just something that I've thought about since Tuesday, because I know how they operate, and I know this was... I, I could see it coming. Um, I've only had a four-minute conversation with Andrew Hildich on Tuesday and I haven't heard um, from anyone else at Cricket Australia since. And I've been involved with the organisation for since 1999. Stuart Clark was another player who was pretty unhappy that he was pushed to the outer for seemingly no reason. What, from your point of view, makes someone more favoured than someone else in the selector's eyes when the numbers, says, the numbers say something different? Oh, look, I think at the moment it's just because of the fact that we haven't been winning as a team, you know, and I've paid the price for that. Um, you know, if we were winning, I don't think it would have been an issue. But because we haven't been winning, you know, that's, that's the thing. And, you know, I can understand why they're looking to the future. Um, you know, I've got no problem with that. What I've got a problem with is the fact that, you know, you still pick the team based on how you've been performing. I take the risk by playing on, you know, that if I don't perform, I get cut. And it's not, a, it's not nice to, to get dropped. I've been through it all before. Um, but, you know, I'm prepared to back myself and, and put myself through that, that sort of stress, I guess, because that's what I love doing. That's, that's the buzz I get from playing the game, putting myself under pressure and, and going out there and trying to perform. Simon, can you uh, tell us about the nature of your four-minute conversation with Seth Henry? Oh, look, yeah, I'm not going to go into specific details, but obviously it was very difficult for him to, to break the news. Um, but as soon as he told me the reason, um, which was, as I said before, what was being treated, trotted out in the press about wanting the opening partnership to bed down for the 2013 Ashes, um, you know, that, that got me steaming, obviously, because um, to hear that when, you know, our opening partnership is something that has been one of the strong points of the team and, and something that Waddle and I actually really enjoy um, doing. I've received a, a really nice message from him of support um, and, you know, expressing his disappointment that we won't get to open again. Um, but that's, you know, that's the way it goes um, and that was their decision. I, I certainly made it clear to him uh, what I felt about the decision. Um, it wasn't a personal nature, but it was just made um, expressing the fact that I, I didn't agree with it. Have you spoken to Michael No, I haven't spoken to him, no. Do you think, do you oh, think that to, to be fair, I haven't spoken to a lot of people because um, you know, I have had a lot of support um, and a lot of messages, but I haven't spoken um, to him at all. Do you think that he might have influence at all? No, look, I, I know there's going to be a lot made of that. Um, I have seen the press the last few days, and I know, obviously, Michael Slater made some comments the other day. Um, I'd just like to say, in regards to that situation, you know, look, I'm not going to shy away from the fact that we, we had the uh, incident a couple of years ago, but I think we've both been really professional in handling that in the last two years, and it hasn't been a problem since then. Um, so I, I don't think you know, that's, that's an issue. So, I mean, can you give us a feel for, for what this means to you and your family financially? Yeah, look, that's not why I'm playing the game. I mean, I know there's going to be a lot made of that because, you know, we, we get paid very, very well. Um, but I'm also very respectful of the fact that, you know, there's plenty of people out in Australia that are well worse off than I am. Um, it's not about that for me. It's just about the fact that I know I've earned the right to play for Australia through my performance. Um, and to have that taken away, you know, for a reason that I don't agree with, um, I just think it's blatantly wrong. So I'm on that financial question, just, just quickly. Is the um, high-paid IPL uh, a likely option for you to pursue? Uh, n not really when you consider the way I play. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it is a young man's game. 2020 is probably better suited to a young man's game, but I tell you what, you, you only have to look at the Indian side. And I mean, uh, their test team's ranked number one, and I, tell you, I think they've got plenty of blokes over 35, all still playing very well. So, um, you know, test cricket's probably better suited to me. And that's why I have made the decision, you know, the last few years to really focus on that and try to do that as well as I can because um, I have really treasured this opportunity in the last couple of years to, to make the most of it because, as I said before, four years ago they told me I was finished. So, um, you know, it's just nice to have gotten back out there again. So, does, the, does Australia need full-time professional selectors? 
Oh, look, there's been talk about that for a while now, but nothing's been done about it. You know, it's a business. There's no doubt about that. Um, that's just the way sport has gone. Um, being realistic, it's, it's got to go that way because you're dealing with guys' careers. And as I said before, this is not just me. This is plenty of other guys out there as well that have gone through this. So, um, you know, maybe this some good will come out of this situation. So do you think that given that the very best players play the game, you can get up to, say, $2 million bucks for, for playing for Cream Australia and they pay part-time, so they can get $40,000, or rather the value of what they're doing? Oh, look, no doubt, because I think, uh, you know, when you get when you talk about money, you know, you get the best in the business for, for paying. If you pay peanuts, you get monkeys, you know? So... So you said you considered every option. How close did you come to actually putting legal proceedings against the ACA for age discrimination? Well, look, there's no, no as I said, there's no um, grievance tribunal. I've sort of spoken about that with the ACA. So the only option, um, you know, as a possible option to deal with this situation is, is legal proceedings um, for unfair dismissal. Um, but that's not, that's not what this was all about for me. Um, you know, it's it's about playing for Australia. The reaction you got from the public, you said it was a humbling experience. Can you expand on that a little bit? Well, you know, I mean, I've been through pretty much everything in my career, and um, I know to, to sort of have that support has been unbelievable. Because, um, I, I mean, you know, I am, I'm not going to shy away from it, as I said before. At 35, you know, it could easily have been perceived as being, yeah, I am too old, um, and send him on his way. But... You know, I think the, the people have appreciated the fact that I have performed these last few years, so age shouldn't be a factor. As I said, just like the, the other guys that are performing in other parts of the world, um, it's about performance, and it should always be about performance. Do you think of a batsman like Sachin Tendulkar at this time? Yeah, I mean, he's been an inspiration to all of us older guys because, you know, he was written off well, probably a couple of years ago, ironically, by one of our selectors. Um, you know, and and then the fact is that he's proven him wrong, and you know the public wrong in that um, he's gone out there, scored 200 in a one day game. You know that's that's a world record, obviously. Um, his te last Test year was unbelievable, and he averaged over 80. Um, there's no reason why age should be a limiting factor. It's it's obviously your mind and your drive. Have they said to you that they won't pick you again? Pretty much, yeah, yeah. Yes, last, last three questions. Yes, the aforementioned national talent manager Greg Chappell came on board. Has he ever had a discussion with you about your future and the way you play? No, he hasn't. Do you think he should have? Probably, yeah. <laughs> Simon, you've played a lot of county cricket over the years. Is that another option to go back to England and play at some stage? Yeah, look, as I said, I've, um, I've been fortunate that I've had, um, and, and I have a county offer at the moment as well. Um, so from that point of view, you know, it's something I've always enjoyed doing. As I said, you can't play forever. And I've always thought that, you know, you enjoy your career while you can playing-wise because you're a long time retired. All the retired guys say that to you. So, um, yeah, that, that's something that, that might be considered um, down the track. Simon, uh, just to, uh, to, I suppose, put in context, I mean, it's very, it's extraordinary circumstances to have a player talking like you are, very frankly, about selection situations, all that kind of stuff. Does that just reflect that it's, it's gone too far in terms of, negatives against players, in your opinion? Is that, that why this, this has happened? Um, oh, look, no doubt. Um, not only from my own point of view, but I think, you know, I'm still technically contracted till the end of June 30, so no doubt the phone will ring and I'll probably, you know, have to answer to this. But at the same time, um, you know, I'm not going to stand up here and lie about it all because that's not what... That, it does, it's not going to help anyone uh, moving forward. And so, as I said, hopefully the review, something good will come out of that review because, you know, this might just be, um, you know, the straw that breaks the camel's back. Okay, guys, thanks very much. Appreciate your attendance. Thank you.